One of the key parts in becoming a successful and beloved pro wrestler is knowing when to call it a day. Unfortunately, numerous iconic wrestlers have continued to wrestle despite there being a lack of demand to see them perform and this lack of demand mainly comes from the wrestlers best days being way behind them and their in-ring work failing to deliver. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers that fans were ready to see retire. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10. Jerry the King Lawler Jerry the King Lawler is a legend that will seemingly never retire, but in 2012 there were calls from fans to see Lawler finally hang up his boots. Lawler suffered a heart attack following a match on Raw and from this point onwards, fans believed it would be in Lawler's best interest for him to stop wrestling immediately, but Lawler had other ideas. Lawler has wrestled numerous times a year since his heart attack and all of these matches have occurred outside of WWE, as it's evident that WWE really aren't comfortable with booking Lawler in a featured matchup. Lawler has been pushing WWE to let him wrestle another match, potentially even at WrestleMania, and this is what the King said during an appearance on The Bump. I'm still hoping to get a rematch, referencing the WrestleMania 27 match against Michael Cole, or at least another WrestleMania match under my belt before I call it a career in wrestling. Do you think Lawler should have one more match? Let us know in the comments down below. Number 9. Vader During the peak of his career, Vader was considered to be one of the greatest big men in pro wrestling history. Vader had strength, speed, and could seemingly have great matches with anyone of any size. He would sadly wrestle way past his prime and his matches took place in companies such as Impact and Rev Pro, but they were sad affairs and it didn't make for pleasant viewing at all. Obviously, it's not fair to judge someone's specific circumstances as we'll never know Vader's reasons for continuing to wrestle, but thankfully none of these poorly received matches hindered his legacy with fans as he's still widely regarded as a true legend of the art of wrestling. Number 8. Kevin Nash Kevin Nash was a mainstay throughout the 90s both in WWE and WCW, but in the 2000s his ring work began to slowly regress. Nash's WWE run between 2002 to 2003 wasn't met with critical acclaim as his matches were rather poor and a history of injuries were catching up to the former WWE champion. Nash eventually signed for TNA where he had some decent matches, but his matches were never anything special and it could be argued that he only stuck around for a payday. In 2011, Nash decided to return to WWE to have one more run in the spotlight and this included a number of matches including a bizarre ladder match with Triple H at the TLC pay-per-view. Whilst this match was passable, it was hard to watch Nash struggle through the match and even Nash himself admitted how difficult it was on his podcast. What do you mean both don't normally have ladder matches? How about I've never done one in my life? I've got 17 knee operations and he's running the show and I get to talk to him about 8 minutes in the ring before the doors open. That was my last match. Everybody else gets to have a last match. That was mine. Nash would go on to wrestle on several other occasions following the infamous ladder match, including appearing in the Royal Rumble and making appearances for independent wrestling companies. Number 7. The Big Show A former champion, The Big Show, is up there with the most respected and well-liked wrestlers of the past three decades. However, Big Show went through an awkward period of his career in WWE where fans were actively trying to encourage him to retire. Big Show's booking was stagnant and he was still presented as one of the biggest stars on the show when fans simply wanted new life on Raw and SmackDown each and every week. Big Show was often met with chants of please retire and according to Big Show himself during an interview with The Mirror, he had people coming up to him in the street asking him to retire. I think I'm doing my job as a heel. I think a lot of it too is just a way for the audience to have fun. I mean let's face it, I don't have people coming up to me in the streets telling me to please retire. I have people I meet in person who are thankful for everything I've done and they appreciate it. I think that's just the audience having fun and when they chant that. Number 6. Goldberg When Goldberg returned to WWE in 2016, it appeared to be a one match only deal. Goldberg returned to defeat Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series and it was a fun showcase of everything Goldberg was about, but there was virtually zero demand to see Goldberg wrestle again. Goldberg kept returning for more and more matches and these included multiple world title wins, defeating stars such as Kevin Owens and Bray Wyatt in the process and this simply isn't what fans wanted. Goldberg quickly became resented by the fan base as his matches were abysmal and almost ended in disaster. If Goldberg sailed off into the sunset in 2016, he would have had his legacy and reputation intact, but his decision to wrestle time and time again without question hindered his legacy. Number 5. Kane Kane managed to remain relevant in numerous eras of WWE programming. However, as Kane got into the latter stages of his career, the demand to see Kane in top programs on WWE TV began to dwindle. 
During Kane's run as corporate Kane, there was an evident lack of enthusiasm from fans towards him. As Kane's matches were lackluster at best and Kane's character was so far removed from what made him popular during the Attitude Era. In recent years, the Devil's favorite demon has taken a step back from the squared circle in favor of focusing on his political aspirations, and this is probably the right move. Kane hasn't ruled out wrestling again, and if he opts to compete once more, hopefully he's able to offer fans a half decent performance. Number 4 Ric Flair WrestleMania 24 featured the perfect retirement match for Ric Flair as he took part in a classic showdown with Shawn Michaels. Flair told everyone that this was going to be his final match, but Flair made the controversial call to wrestle again in TNA. Flair's matches in TNA were horrendous and they arguably could have tarnished his legacy. Flair being a member of the TNA roster in a non-wrestling role was fine with the overall fan base, but nobody was actively pushing for Flair to wrestle ever again, especially having such an acclaimed send-off back at WrestleMania 24. Years after Flair had seemingly retired from the ring, he came out of retirement in 2022 for a special event titled Ric Flair's Last Match. While some fans may have enjoyed seeing Flair to do this thing one more time, there was a ton of concern for Flair's welfare during the matchup. Hopefully the match brought an end to Flair's in-ring career, but he has notoriously claimed he will never retire, so it's incredibly likely that the 16-time world champion wrestles once more before it's all said and done. Number 3. Mick Foley Unlike most of the wrestling legends on this list, Mick Foley is one of the most self-aware pro wrestlers there is. Foley initially wrestled for the final time back in 2000, but he came out of retirement several times with some matches being classics and a considerable number of matches unfortunately being total duds. After Foley wrestled Edge at WrestleMania 22, fans believe that Foley should have hung up his boots forever, as he was never going to top the quality of the matchup, but Foley continued on. He wrestled several more matches for WWE and even had matches in TNA. Foley himself is fully aware that fans wanted to see him hang up his boots, and he stated on his podcast that if he could ever rewrite history, he would have officially called it a day following his all-time classic against Randy Orton at 2004's Backlash pay-per-view. If I could rewrite my own history, I would never have wrestled again. I would have had to come back against Randy because you're allowed one comeback match. I would have done the tag with The Rock, followed it up with a match against Randy, and then never wrestled again. I think everyone accepts that you're going to have one comeback match, but I wouldn't have done a match six weeks later at WrestleMania 2000. I would have done those two matches and it would have been it. Number 2. Hulk Hogan Hulk Hogan just never seemed to know when to call it a day. There were calls from fans to see Hogan retire in early 2000s, yet Hogan continued to wrestle and was still featured in prominent spots in both WCW and WWE. Hogan would even win the WWE title in 2002, which was seen as the nostalgia run, but outside of his matches with The Rock, Hogan's in-ring work wasn't at the level fans or WWE wanted. Instead of retiring with his head held high, Hogan continued to have huge matches with the likes of Shawn Michaels and Randy Orton, and these were matches that Hogan won, which was a questionable booking move. Over a decade after fans began to push Hogan towards retirement, he would wrestle in TNA, which included an infamous match with Sting. It looks like due to Hogan's health, he has officially hung up his boots for the final time, but you never know when Hogan will crave the spotlight once more. And number 1. The Undertaker the legendary Undertaker wrestled for decades on end, and the dead man's dedication and love for pro wrestling was inevitably going to take a toll on his body. Around 2014, The Undertaker's in-ring work began to drastically decrease in quality, and subsequent matches with the likes of Roman Reigns and Goldberg were signs that it was finally time for the dead man to call it a day. The desire from the fan base to see the dead man retire was out of respect, as he had nothing to prove, and there was concern that if he was going to carry on wrestling, he was going to get seriously hurt or seriously hurt somebody else. Thankfully, in 2020, the conscience of WWE decided he was finally ready to wrap a bow around a phenomenal career. Taker would wrestle AJ Styles at WrestleMania 36 in a cinematic match that could have been delivered any better, and a Hall of Fame induction would follow, which would allow fans to say goodbye to one of the most celebrated wrestlers of all time. Well, there you have it, folks, 10 WWE wrestlers that fans were ready to see retire. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.